guys welcome back to my channel yours truly Macon here I know lately the videos have been mostly discussing decor and styles believe me the actual hands-on decorating and DIY videos are being recorded as we speak and are coming but I have gotten a lot of requests to break down certain styles more in detail I want you to know on this channel you ask you will receive. My goal is to set you up with all necessary information to assist you in finding the best personal style for you. No influencer coercion here. This is all about you. Mrs. Free Love asked me to explore new traditional style. Hello love and much love from Munich. So join me as I take on the challenge of transforming each room in your home into a new traditional style masterpiece. Let's get started. Okay, recall, traditional style is timeless, classical furniture and lines combined with 18th century and 19th century, meaning 1700s to 1800s art and artifacts and antiques. Traditional style has been making a comeback, but our homes, especially the structural architecture in modern times has changed to meet our current needs. Think open concept, larger kitchens with modern aspects like large islands, reduction of elaborate molding and interior architectural detail, larger windows, open access to our gardens and nature, probably a pool. This has influenced the evolution of new or neo-traditional style. The furniture is still classic and timeless, but losing some of its uh, curve and decorative look. No more Chesterfield sofas or Queen Anne chairs. Very sleek, minimal extras. Take the frill away from curtains and furniture accents. Not all designers would agree with me on the next design aspect, but do you think I care? For new traditional, I tend to reduce the age of the art and artifacts decor. Traditional 18th century and 19th century accents. So 300 to 200 year old pieces. We are, believe it or not, already through a quarter of the 21st century. So let's reduce that antique spectrum by 100 years meaning mixing in antiques and art no older than 200 to 100 years old. Think 1820 to 1920 or 30s, or just everything from very late 1800s to the first two decades of the 1900s. That will significantly um, give a fresher and more modern feel to your traditional style, fitting more to your modern home design. You could also incorporate uh, the sleeker designs of the late empire period, which lasted until the late 1820s, but nothing older. Think that um, Art Nouveau and Art Deco piece, Impressionist or Expressionist art, no mid-century pieces, but maybe here or there a little brutalism. Actually, one of my favorite design eras, very short-lived but impactful. Don't know any style since the 1950s, it does not compliment. Okay, I know now I need a video covering brutalism. I'm on it. Okay, time to break down room for room. Starting with our modern kitchens. Example of an earlier traditional kitchen, much like mine, complete, separate, and timeless. And let's look at how kitchens really looked in the 19th century, let's say late 1800s didn't really have islands, but maybe a table centered in the kitchen if it was large enough. Now modern times, the kitchen is open, more marble or granite has replaced wood, large island, open concept to family or eating areas. Let's first consider the perfect island. 
I feel this is where you should keep the most late 1800s accents and influences. Dark wood. More decorative, but not too decorative edges. Or incorporate a complete antique dresser slash console into a more modern, sleek, contemporary design like here. Absolutely gorgeous. Or a complete antique island. Do not forget antique lighting and kitchen fixtures. Maybe your bar stools for the island are Victorian. You must also never forget architectural details. Look at some of these pics again. Notice the coffered ceilings. The traditional antique details don't always have to lie in the art, artifacts, or furniture, but also in the architecture, i.e. ceiling details, coffered or crown molding. But remember, a tick simpler. We have moved the antique influence era up 100 years. Jugendstil and Art Deco have great design structure, but are not so elaborate. Wall details like certain wallpaper and wood paneling or wall moldings. And the use of copper as your main metal accent. Copper is so very late 1800s and making a comeback just like chrome. So that makes it also what? Also contemporary. Okay, now let's turn that kitchen around. Remember it is open to another area. What is now there? Are we going to have a breakfast nook, full dining area, or open to the family room, or all of the above? Again, choose your traditional accents within architecture. If everything is open, you want to continue that coffered ceiling or the wall molding or the wainscoting from the kitchen into the open area. Everything has to unite. Everything is one open space now. Art and artifacts are like here, totally in the classic furniture. Now, let's skip over to powder rooms. They have not really changed over the last hundred years just maybe have become more abundant in homes. I believe powder rooms are where you can let every design idea loose. Not much is going to change between a traditional and a neo-traditional style powder room. It is a small room with a toilet and a sink. A more modern one may have a sleeker contemporary sink cabinet and marble instead of wood, but the traditional style can come from uh, the wallpaper, millwork, mirrors, lighting or art. Same with the primary bathroom. What was earlier smaller and confined has become more open and vast. Maybe even open up to walk-in closets and dressing rooms. Keep the traditional accents in the millwork, antique cabinets, Think of um, my antique cabinet in my bathroom, okay? Mirrors, lighting, and artwork. Keep it the traditional aspects in those things. I especially love this bathroom. See this? The millwork on the bathtub surround. The antique cabinet used under the sink. The mirror, sconces, artwork, etc. In the dressing area, Think of cabinet detail accents. A simple decorative antique door or drawer pool could be enough and keep uh, everything else simple and contemporary. As well as maybe just a complete antique cabinet in the middle of the dressing room, um, similar to the kitchen island ideas. You guys, I know the majority of us, and us includes me, myself, and I also, I uh, don't have the space for many of these design layouts I am showing here, but it is um, always easier to reduce and design a smaller space. What is hard is a larger space to fill and coordinate. For this reason, I show the larger space layouts. If your space is smaller, then choose the one or two best, not only aesthetic, but functional pieces for you to incorporate in your interior design. Okay. Let's move on to the bedroom. 
Before in more traditional home layouts, a study slash lounge or reading room slash library or drawing room was separate from our bedrooms. But in most modern homes, if small or large, we have combined a relaxing sitting area, even if it's just very minimum, one armchair and a tiny table in our bedrooms. If you choose a more contemporary bed with simple contemporary nightstands, then in your seating area is where the space is to bring in those traditional pieces through the style of the armchair or your reading lamp, uh, the table or the piece of artwork or vice versa. When your bed is traditional, let's imagine a beautiful wood antique piece or maybe just the nightstands or the antique influence. Then your seating area should be more sleek, lined and contemporary. And from late 1800s to Art Deco art can adorn your walls and don't forget a beautiful statement mirror. Okay, some people, which I feel is very beautiful when it comes to traditional style, is the um, curtain accents that hang behind your headboard. If you're gonna go for something like that, then let's get away from this more elaborate traditional style and go for something like this, more contemporary and just sleek with the curtains. But my suggestion is to get that perfect traditional style, throw up a mirror over those curtains or a beautiful piece of traditional art. Okay guys, I would love to backtrack to the living room. What if your open kitchen uh, open to an eating area and family room, okay? And you have a totally separate, more formal living room. An earlier traditional living room was probably smaller and more as the parlor to receive guests. You know, that living room you never went into unless there was a special reason as you were a child. If you are fortunate to have the extra room to have a formal living room, I would lay it out in smaller, intimate group settings for socializing. You can go with more contemporary, simple, but smaller sofas to get more than one in the space to set up the main gathering area. Think about my core concetta sofas, which are a great example of timeless design and not dateable. Then off in different other corners of the room, further group settings. Bring in the traditional accents in those smaller settings. An antique chair paired with a simpler chair. Or with the table, it is antique and it's paired with two contemporary chairs or vice versa. Think an antique game table, antique chess set. If you have a fireplace, two antique pieces flanking each side of the fireplace, decorated with a combination of antique and contemporary art, statues, lamps. If the fireplace is simple and more modern, then um, a large gilded mirror to counterbalance, or then the opposite, decorative fireplace, simpler mirror. Remember, this is a formal living room for entertaining. We don't need the TV over the fireplace. Reserve that space for a mirror or a beautiful piece of art. Don't forget structural accents, simpler, covered ceiling, portrait molding, wainscoting. Okay, now let's speak of the living rooms which are in the majority of homes. The open kitchen is only open to an eating area and due to limited space, the family room is the same as the living room separating the situated somewhere else in the house. Now in modern times, that living room slash family room is for everyone, especially the immediate family, meaning children and the everyday family lifestyle, playing, watching TV, plus extensive family gatherings for celebrations and making memories. Yeah, I can be sentimental <laughs> just sometimes. Nicht off, aber immer öfter. Okay, I'm not going to even translate that. I'm just going to leave that there for my German speaking followers. Oh, by the way, if I may for a minute address just them. 
Meine Süßen, mein deutschsprachiger Kanal ist jetzt online. Ich werde den Link unten in der Beschreibung, Strich, Informationssektion lassen. Ich freue mich so auf euch. Okay, back to the Neo traditional style and the all-in-one family living room. I recommend the simplest, sleek, large sectional or modular sofa. The whole family needs room on that sofa. Cover it in a very good performance fabric that is resistant to everything. Children, pets, many family gatherings and will last many, many years. If you want a couple of more sensitive antique pieces, create a smaller sitting area off to the side where the children not necessarily sit or play, you know, just for adults. If you have a large window, maybe build a window seat under that window and possibly built-ins on each side of the window. These built-ins provide a ton of space to display traditional antiques, you know, out of the reach of children, antique books, all the family pictures framed in antique frames. The best traditional pieces I believe to bring in such an inclusive family room are ones from grandparents and great-grandparents. You know, ones you remember as a child and you can tell stories about to your children or guests. They have more sentimental value and not high monetary value. So the family room is livable and not like in a museum, afraid the kids or the golden doodle will destroy something. And try to keep the fireplace and the surrounding artwork, sconces and ceiling light as traditional as possible. Even if you upgrade from a wood burning to a more modern and better functioning for your modern lifestyle gas fireplace, keep the aesthetics classic and old world. A beautiful, cozy, large wood antique coffee table, I believe is a must. Room for games and puzzles. Possibly cover it with a glass top to preserve and protect until the kids are older. Reminds me of something I saw newly. This Baker coffee table um, is a beautiful addition as well. Um, but like I said, with children, things happen, and my daughter was taking her nail polish off on the table, which kills me. And that's my point, you know? I look at that now, and I kind of miss that she was six years old and doing that because she's 11 now. But the point is, is that my gorgeous coffee table has a mark on it, but that's my point. You gotta live and learn with it all. Remember that a well-lived-in home is going to collect flaws over the years. The last tip I want to give has to do with the curtains. Recall some of the frill from traditional style has been reduced in new traditional style and windows are much larger in modern homes. So keep your curtains simple. No more balances, highly decorative trim, Imagine all that on a large scale now. All the decor attention is then hogged up from the curtains. We are going for simpler curtains, similar to what I showed you earlier as bed curtain decor. Maybe consider one of my tips I always use in designing my home. Curtains and the walls are the exact same color. It allows a more cohesive blank canvas and the artwork wall sconces and structural accents are not competing with the curtains. The curtains basically disappear into the walls and the larger the windows, the larger the curtains. So disappearing and not standing out is a good thing. And consider the open concept rooms, which increase the amount of windows seen in one area. Then it turns into more curtains in one area. So all one color for the curtains blending into the wall is ideal. Oh, and don't forget about layering those antique rugs all through the home. Different rugs in different areas are a great way to help section off different areas in an open concept. Don't forget, my apartment is dated from the late 1800s. But we also have incorporated the, the modern open concept by tearing down a wall here creating a large open dining and living room space. I have one rug under the dining room table and a cluster of different rugs here um, in the living area defining 
each area. Okay, it's, it is, it's clear that that is the dining room because the dining table is there and here are couches, but you know what I mean. It gives each space a little of its own character. And there, the colors are not exactly as all the colors I used here, but all my curtains on both sides there are all the same color and don't clash with anything because they blend into the wall and my wall color works with everything. Okay guys, I hope I have explained what you need to get started on your version of a neo or new traditional home. Please send me pics. I am truly interested in what tips and advice you are implementing. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to ask down in the comments. Thank you so much for stopping by. And as always, yours truly, heart making. Ciao! No influencer co- Ugh, I knew I was gonna fuck up saying that. I've been practicing that, it's hard to say together. No influencer co- Coercion, coercion. Door or drawer, drawer, drawer. A simple decorative um, antique door or drawer, drawer, drawer. I'm saying it right, right? Drawer, 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 drawer. Okay. <laughs>